The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros, Simon Jordan and Eddie Hearn debate AJ's chin. So they debate Anthony Joshua's chin, you know, as uh, you know, Simon Jordan, the UK Skip Bayless, uh, you know, who sat down with uh, Eddie Hearn. So we're going to uh, take a listen to what was said about Anthony Joshua's chin, and then we'll we'll discuss this. So. Uh, here we go. The question for me, and I make an observation about it, which Eddie's commented on previously about the PTSD situation, is yeah, what did when, you he, say there? when he does get whacked, is he going to go where he needs to go to do things like he did against Klitschko, which was go to a very dark place, pick himself off the floor, and have the absolute resolve? I don't think that question has been answered or asked yet, and it may get asked by Daniel Dubois. And what? then only then you'll know if he's the Anthony Joshua Ed, prior to Eddie a reason. Simon's Usyk. previous PTSD comments in other words can anthony take one on the chin from dubois and crack on or does he hit the canvas and it's good night light lights out did did you think the, the, there was relevance in what simon raised no i think you know people always look to debate a heavyweight's chin or their resolve i actually think joshua has a good chin you know i think when we look back it's only really the andy ruiz fight which you know he didn't have the best preparation. It was three weeks out, but he got top hit on the top of the head and he never really recovered. Went down, got up about four or five times, got beat that night. Um, he took quite a, a, a decent shellacking off Usyk in the first fight. Um, and particularly in the latter stages of that fight, if you look at the Usyk-Tyson Fury fight, Fury was completely out of his, on his feet. I mean, mm. buzzed, rocked, gone. Yeah, AJ took everything from Usyk in that fight was never out on his feet, was tired towards the end of the fight. But, you know, I actually think he has a good chin. It doesn't really matter how good your chin is. When you get here, I think Dubois has got a good chin, by the way. You know, if you look at the Hergovic fight, and I don't think Hergovic physically looked a specimen in that fight, but he's definitely a world-class heavyweight. He hit Dubois with everything and yeah. didn't really hurt him in that fight. Mm. And I think the way that Dubois has lost in the past, and I, I don't like to say it because I think he's, all of these guys are incredibly brave. He quit. He quit against Joyce and he quit against Usyk, right? And But he never got hurt. You know, like if you look at the knockout against Usyk, it was, you know, he, he went down, it was a stiff jab, he took a knee and didn't really fancy getting up. But some he, would make the accusation that Anthony Joshua did the same thing in the Ruiz fight. And it's not about, I'm not suggesting that he can't take a punch. I think the accusation was that Anthony doesn't let his hands go now and he doesn't want to put himself in range. And that was what was being said to me by, you'll say, I'll say Carl Froch, you'll say, well, there's Rancor there. And other people, not just, you know, Froch or Barry McGuigan and other people, the, the general perception was maybe he hasn't got the fire left him anymore. Yeah. He's a very successful man. He's made a lot of money. And the business that you guys are in puts you in a way of danger and hurt. And, and in order to want to do that to the level to win a world title, does Joshua still have the fire? Yeah. And I don't think those questions have been answered by fighting Franklin, Hellenius, mm. um, Wallin, Wallin and Ngannou. I think mm. he's done a great job. Mm. No criticism implies. I think there may be a different challenge in front of him with Dubois, and only then will the full rehabilitation of anti Joshua be answered that, hang on, he still wants it as mm. badly as he did once upon a time. Yeah, that's no, the question. I, I get that. I think you have to show that in the room. Right. So basically, oh, uh, yeah, this video appears courtesy of Talk Sport. Subscribe to Talk Sport. I'm shocked they only have 180,000 subs, but then again, they do have Simon, so then that doesn't surprise me. But uh, anyways, um, Dollar Bill, um, you heard the debate. Simon saying basically this and only this will answer questions about Anthony Joshua's chin and whether or not he's going to have PTSD from his other fights. And, you know, Eddie says he thinks AJ has a good chin. What's your take on this Uh the debate and what's your thoughts on your what what do you think of Joshua's chin? You know, I think the homie Simon's talking complete rubbish, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. He's talking complete rubbish, bro. Um, yeah, man. Uh I don't know why AJ be getting all these doubters and these haters and stuff like that. AJ has a great chin. He got hit. People don't remember when he got hit. He didn't get hit on the chin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, nah, nah, listen. Um, nah. AJ, AJ got, got. Shout out to Eddie. Eddie was talking straight facts. 
You know, when it comes to to, to AJ, Eddie be spot on. He don't be playing no games when he's talking about uh, Joshua. He messed up a couple times with Joshua in that whole Ruiz situation. Uh, we all know that. Um, but he was spot on. I think that, you know, AJ, he got a better chin than a lot of these heavyweights out here. Better chin than Tyson Fury. Like he explained that, like with the Usyk um, comparison, when he used that. Um, look, Daniel Dubois is exactly who he is. He's a punching bag. <laughs> and as long as as long as you can, you know, keep stay in shape while punching him. I mean, <laughs> not lose energy, just beating on him, because that's basically what it is. People get tired, like like my brother Caden has said. People get tired beating on them, and that's how they end up winning. Because people just get just hit them so much, and they be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he's just left there, and that's how it happens. Um, yes, Dan Dubois is a quitter, and I don't think that AJ is going to make him quit. I don't think AJ is going to give him the chance. I think AJ is going to go in there and just straight spark him out. You know, um, yes, Daniel Dubois needs to be respected. He's a tough, and he showed durable guy. Sometimes he can take a punch. But he showed that mentally when he gets a little tough, you know, he will quit, you know. But we're talking about chin here. And I think that AJ got a, a great chin. He just got caught. He got caught. It hit him in the back of the ear, right? Rushing in after he all people forgot what he did to Andrew Ruiz before. And like he was rushing in and he got caught. Wasn't able to recover. Oh well. He got get back. <laughs> he came back and got get back. Nobody else has been able to do it. You got Klitschko dropped him. He got up off of the ground to win that fight. You know? Um, look, I think that, you know, um, yeah, he got a he got he got a great chin, man. People just be looking for excuses and looking for things just to say about the guy AJ instead of just admiring what they got in front of him. This was a guy who was the role warrior at one time. People were lying to the public when he was the number one heavyweight in the world, fighting the top tier guys, collected all the belts. He was number one, but we always lied to. You know, y'all would say the Jedi mind trick was played on y'all. Y'all thought that Deontay Wilder was one and, and Fury was two or vice versa. You was thinking that because they, they played y'all. They talked a good game. So you thought these guys was the one and two and AJ was just, no. There was always AJ was the number one. He was the one that was out there collecting the belts and look at his resume, was fighting the tougher guys, you know? But AJ always gets the 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 shit. Excuse me, the the poop and the stick. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, I just shout out to Eddie though. Eddie was spitting facts on me. This is nothing but an old school tactic that the media has been playing for the longest time, and it's, I see it happening right now, currently in the United States of America. If the if they can get you to doubt yourself, they win. If they can get you to doubt yourself, they win. Now the media is sending this message to Anthony Joshua to get him to question his own chin, to make him weary and make him worried about whether or not he can take a punch. They don't do the same thing to Tyson Fury, and even his opponent, who has proven to be more chinny than him. They're not doing it to him. And this is all because it's a part of a game. It's a part of a strategy designed to tear down Anthony Joshua and to make him question himself. Now, look, Anthony Joshua has been hurt in a boxing match. So has every other fighter who stepped in the ring. From Tyson Fury, Usyk, Dubois, everyone has been hurt. Floyd. Yep. Yeah. You're not a real fighter if you've never been hurt. And the reason why I say that is because you ain't fought no real competition. If you fight real competition, you're going to get hurt because that's just the nature of the beast. That's boxing. But I'm going to point out some facts to you. Let's just start with Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois was stopped 
by Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce stopped Daniel Dubois. Yep. And now, and, and the reports are, oh, he stopped because he had a broken orbital bone, although uh, there hasn't been no proof of that, right? <laughs> he just took a knee and never got back up. Now, here's the thing. They're saying, oh, he didn't get knocked out, so I think he has a good chin. I disagree. He didn't get knocked out because he quit before he could get knocked out. The same way TJ Dohani quit before he could get knocked out. The same way Ivan Redcatch quit before he could get knocked out. There comes a point in a fight where you know the odds are you're about to get knocked out. And the question is, do you answer the bell? Deontay Wilder, the hype job, the punk, the whatever y'all call him, knew he was going to get knocked out in that 11th round against Tyson Fury, and he still answered the bell. That's hard. Regardless of what you want to say about Deontay Wilder, you can never say he was a punk. Even against um, uh, Zane, a uh, Jane. He answered the bell. He got knocked out. It's cool. It's cool. But let me tell you, Daniel Dubois, when he knows he's about to get knocked out, he takes that knee and he never gets up. That's just what it is. So you can't be like, oh, well, he has a good chin. I never seen him get knocked out. So he took the knee against Joe Joyce. Bang, never got up. Then he fought Lorena, a guy moving up from cruiserweight. And Lorena dropped him three times in the first round. And it looked like Frank slid a check, not even slid a check, because this is this is the new age. He just wired that money, cash tapped them. And it looked like Lorena just uh, let the fight be. Then there was the fight with Usyk. He, again, took the knee when he was about to get knocked out and just never got up. Okay? So you can say he has a good chin, but I don't think he has a good chin. Because when he's about to get knocked out, he just takes the knee and he doesn't get up. Is it, is it quitting? You can call it whatever. But here's my thing. Even with all this evidence of Daniel Dubois being chinny, they don't question whether Daniel Dubois is going to have PTSD when Anthony Joshua hits him. They don't question whether or not Daniel Dubois is going to have a hard time standing up if Anthony Joshua lands as many right hands on him as uh, Hergovich did. And Anthony Joshua just knocked the guy clean out. With, with some right hands that Tyson Fury couldn't even hurt. And and, and they don't question whether or not Dean Dubois is going to get PTSD when he gets hit with a right hand. This same guy, Simon, right, has faith in Tyson Fury being Usyk, wants Tyson Fury to be Usyk, believes Tyson Fury is capable of being Usyk, Usyk, but he doesn't question Tyson Fury's chin. Tyson Fury, who was dropped by S.S. Cunningham, Tyson Fury that was dropped by Deontay Wilder four times. Tyson Fury that was dropped by Francis Ngannou. Tyson Fury that was on skates against Usyk, I believe, in the ninth round. And the referee saved him because when Usyk was coming in to give him that business, that's when he decided to give Fury the eight count, right? But he doesn't question whether Fury's going to get PTSD in his, in his fight with Usyk. He don't question Fury's mental. They only do this to Anthony Joshua, and that's because they want to create self-doubt in Anthony Joshua. They want Anthony Joshua to doubt himself. When the reality is Anthony Joshua has proven to have a better chin than all the fighters I just named, with the exception of Usyk. All the fighters I just named, he's shown a better chin than Fury, a better chin than Daniel Dubois. He showed a better chin than both of them. Yes, Anthony Joshua was dropped against Klitschko. What did he do? He got up and he gave him that business. He was rocked against uh, 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 Dillian White. What did he do? He sparked Dillian White out with an uppercut. Yes, in the first fight against Usyk in the 12th round, he was fatigued. He was hurt. And Usyk had him up against the ropes. But that was in the 12th round. I think I think the bell rung early, too. But whatever. He... he, 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 he he, didn't, he wasn't he wasn't out against uh Ruiz as Trill pointed out that wasn't on the chin it was a little behind the ear whatever and he was in the corner standing up now did he look like he wanted to go back out there and fight Ruiz I'll be the first to admit he looked like he didn't he he wasn't excited about it he wasn't thrilled to do it but he looked like he was about to go do it if the ref would have put the mouthpiece in and, and let it go on now after that people say he looked hesitant he looked timid he looked whatever it's the same thing Otto Wallin was saying. What did he do? He went in there and whooped that boy. Otto Wallin was talking all that all that mess. He whooped Otto Wallin. Now, all of a sudden, Otto Wallin's not a good fighter, but he gave Tyson Fury fits. 
right? He gave Tyson Fury fits. And before AJ fought him, everyone was saying how Otto Valley's style was completely wrong for AJ. And people were saying how the upset of the night might be Otto Valley being AJ. AJ goes in there and beats the brakes off him. Otto Valley wasn't that good. The After Francis Ngannou has a split decision loss to Tyson Fury, and everyone's laughing at boxing, AJ goes in there and makes it right, and then everyone's like, oh, well, you know, it's just Francis Ngannou, an MMA you, fighter. You, can't, fighter you, know. you can't give him any credit. <laughs> you can't give him any credit for that. How about restoring boxing? Like, the UFC was so happy and geeked off of that, and AJ went back in there and reminded him and said, let me remind you of what a real boxer will do to your guy. Lay him flat. AJ gets no respect for that. You think that this is a coincidence? It's not. They want to tear down AJ, the media. They don't want AJ to be the guy. They want someone else to be the guy. So that's how they move, and that's what they do. The question is, is AJ going to let them penetrate his psyche? Because as I said in the beginning, if they can make you doubt yourself, they win. This is what they do. And I said what they're currently doing in America. What they're currently doing in America is every slick boxer who hits and doesn't get hit, they want them to believe they're boring. So they want to force every slick boxer now to abandon utilizing their skill and their talent and just stand and go toe to toe on some dumbness. That's what they want to do. Because, again, if they can get you to doubt yourself, they win. The question is, is AJ going to doubt himself? I think AJ's beyond the point where he cares about what people say about him. It reminds me of LeBron back in before he won a title or whatever. I think LeBron is so solidified now when he just steps out on the court, he couldn't care less about what you say about him. AJ has lost already. He's been through the, He's been through it all. I think AJ walks in the ring now and says, look, I'm going to walk through you. Or you're going to walk through me. But – why? My question is, how come they don't question Daniel Dubois and how he's going to react if he gets hit with a right hand? Is he going to have PTSD? Remember, he's triple knee and he's about to make it quadruple knee. OK, and so now we got to talk about Tyson Fury and all the time he's been dropped. How come they don't question whether or not Tyson Fury has PTSD? You see what I'm saying? Why is it they always do this to Anthony Joshua? Because there's an agenda out there to discredit and to try to make Anthony Joshua into this mentally weak, fragile dude when he's far from that. And Simon, on the other hand, if anyone's mentally weak and has PTSD, it's you. Because Eddie spanked you so many times on Talk Sport, you don't even want to go at him no more. You was being super friendly with him because you knew Eddie was spanked that behind again. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. I'm the commissioner, Drew Dollar Bill. It's my brother, Caden. It's LLG for life. We are the Boxing Bros. Stop the AJ hate.